Hi everyone, it's Kim Bopney, The Vagina Coach, and in this video, we are going to do a whole beautiful relaxation routine. I have my friend Eddie joining us today. This is a way to help release tension in and around the pelvic floor. It can also be a really nice practice on symptomatic days, so especially for prolapse when you're feeling that dragginess or that heaviness feeling when we have that, we generally start to, to guard, we start to grip a little bit more in our pelvic floor and we need to let go of some of that tension. And as opposite as that sounds, when we feel like there's something dropping out of us or we feel that vulnerable sensation where we want to grip and hold on, it doesn't allow the pelvic floor muscles to do their jobs really well. So we actually need to work on relaxing and releasing tension to build resiliency and strength in that group of muscles. So for this routine, I am gonna be using my stability ball, my yoga block, and I also have a stretch strap. You don't need any of these things. You could use um, a chair instead of your ball. You could use nothing. I'll show you both variations. The block, you could have a stack of towels um, for the strap. You could have a long scarf, so you don't need any fancy equipment, but if you happen to have some on hand, this is what we will be using. I'm also dressed warmly, so I have some socks on and I have a sweatshirt on. When we're doing relaxation or release type movements, we want to be warm. When we feel cold, we're generally tensing up a little. And again, we're trying to let go of some of that tension. And because this isn't a big movement practice with regards to getting the heart rate up, we're not gonna increase our body temperature. So you want to maybe add a few layers to help keep you warm. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first exercise or the first position that we're gonna go into is child's pose. And we're gonna do a wide leg version. So child's pose in yoga typically has you sitting back on your heels with your hands reached out in front of you. What I want you to do is to take your knees a little bit wider. So about a little bit wider than pelvis width or hip width apart. Your toes are gonna to be touching behind you. And then we're gonna uh, go forward into a child's pose. And you have options here with regards to what you do with your arms. You could have potentially a block or a bolster underneath um, to, to support your abdomen. You could also put it up front to rest your head. The choices are completely up to you. The important part is that you are comfortable and that you can relax and you can find ease. Now, before we lengthen down, I want you to just sort of do a little bit of a shimmy side to side and where the, the heels are sort of um, into the butt cheeks just a little bit. But the imagery I want is for you to think about those two sit bones. So if you to bring your hands behind you, you should be able to feel two bony points in your bum. You almost wanna imagine those two points spreading away from one another. So as you sort of sink back, think of those sit bones spreading apart and then reach yourself forward. You can rest your head on your hands. You could rest the forehead on the floor and have your arms extended out. You could rest your head on a block. You could have a bolster here or a stack of towels. Whatever allows you the opportunity to let go of some tension. So I think I will just rest my head in my hands and just hang out here. What I love about a child's pose position is that the movement of the breath in the pelvic floor becomes much more obvious. So bring your attention there. And when you take a breath in, can you feel like there's almost like your, your yoga pants are filling up. I know that sounds a bit odd, but imagine like those sit bones are spreading apart, the pubic joint and the tailbone are spreading away. So there's this expansion that happens. And when you take your breath in, feel all those four points, the pubic joint, tailbone, and two sit bones expanding away. You can think about blossoming your vulva. And then when you exhale, no pelvic floor activation, just feel that fullness leave. When you inhale, you should also feel like your belly presses into your thighs. 
And when you exhale, you can sink a little bit deeper. So the position itself is a little bit of a, a release or a stretch. And then when you add that breath in there, it really kind of amplifies that expansion and that lengthening that we're looking for in the pelvic floor. Let's do a couple more breaths here. And last one, exhale, no activation, just letting the air slowly leave the body. And now we're gonna slowly rise up and we're gonna grab our ball. Again, if you don't have a ball, you could use a chair. You can also do this without a chair but um, or a ball, but I do like the ball because it helps us move a little bit. So you want the ball in front of you or if it's your chair, it's gonna be stationary in front of you and you wanna take a step forward. So you're up on that back knee. If you need to, you could put some extra padding under that back knee for a little bit more support. And now we're gonna, we're gonna let the ball or let the chair hold us. So we're kind of leaning into that ball. And again, another reason why I like the ball is because it's soft and squishy, <laughs> so it can support me without any sharp edges. An ottoman might be something that you could try as well. And I'm just going to lean in to the ball here. So the front of my right pelvis is pressing into the front of that ball. And all I'm doing is just, you know, by pressing the hips forward, it's increasing the length in the front, the hip flexor part. I'm also getting some stretch on this leg here as well. And if I wanted to, I could extend back and get some into the front wall, but I just kind of want to be more supportive here in, in more supported type poses. So I'm just going to lean and just let the ball hang on to me. And I can rock a little bit side to side. I could also go forward and back. So again, because I have that ball and I can roll, I can go forward and back with it. So you sort of choose. I like that, that sort of holding onto that nice deep stretch. So I'm just gonna hang out here for a few breaths. And now we're gonna switch and do the same thing on the other side. And you always wanna transition in and out of stretch, yoga, sort of release poses with some ease and some care. You don't wanna just bolt in and out of them. So finding again the position where I want that ball to be where I can press the hips in and get some nice stretch and then just hang out here. With the amount of sitting that we are accustomed to doing nowadays, this is a really, really great stretch to do to open up that, again, front of the pelvis where the hip flexors are. We have a, a deep muscle on each side called the psoas, which can often be implicated with things like back pain or posteriorly tilted pelvis. Um, it's a place where we often store a lot of fear and emotion, so it's nice to get some length and some release happening into that, into that group. So I'm just going to do a bit of rocking here. And these are, well, this position is actually preparing us for the next position that we're going to be in, which is pigeon pose. So now I'm going to come out of this one nice and slow. And pigeon is probably, probably my favorite yoga pose. And you want to have your block nearby. You could also begin be a stack of towels, could be a yoga bolster. So with pigeon, 
you're going to have one leg behind you and you're going to have one leg kind of bringing that foot up almost as if you're trying to reach it up towards the other wrist. And then we're going to, I need to get enough room here, lengthen that leg behind us. So you may kind of want to inch that knee back. And there's lots of different ways. This is not the kind of official yoga way to get into this pose, but um, this is what I'm doing today. So I'm kind of inching that knee back and keeping the toes tucked under for now. And ideally I want this, my right side to be on the ground, but it's not. So I'm gonna use my block underneath my sit bones there so that I can more restfully be in this pose rather than trying to hold myself up in it. Okay, and then from here, you can untuck that back toe and you may want to stay here. So this would be in, in yin yoga, they call this the proud swan. So this is actually called the swan pose in yin yoga. This would be the proud swan. And if you want, you can come down onto your elbows. And if you wanna go even a little bit further, you can extend your arms straight out, or again, you could rest your forehead or your head into your arms in a sleeping swan. So the lengthening that we did in the front of the pelvis in the last stretch helps us move into a pigeon or swan position. You may find the longer you're in a pose, the more you will be able to sink in or settle into it. I like to hold stretches for around 30 seconds as a minimum. Sometimes I would hold this for upwards of a minute. Depends on the day, depends on the time, depends on what I'm feeling. And as we slowly transition out of this one, we're gonna do the same thing now on the other side. I like to finish off with a little bit of a proud, a little bit of a lengthening in that front body. And now we're gonna switch and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna shift my block over, bringing my left leg forward now and inchworming that right knee back and finding the block to put under my sits bone. This block is actually a little bit high for me, but um, my lower block is put away, so I won't bother getting it right now, but. Okay, and once I've got my position, I'm gonna untuck those back toes and I will lower myself down. And you'll probably notice, as I am right now, that you have one side tighter than another, so this side feels a little more restricted for me today. It's not always the case. And that's okay, it's just an observation. It is what it is. So don't feel like there's any shame in using props to help you. When we can support the bones, the muscles can better relax, which for the point of what we're trying to do here serves us better. So use those bolsters or towels or blocks to assist you to heighten what we're, to heighten the purpose, what we're trying to do, let go. And 
and I'm going to slowly transition and do a little bit of time in the proud swan. And I'm going to uh, tuck under those toes again, inchworm my knee forward, and come on out of the pose. Now I'm going to lower myself down onto my back, and I'm going to move into supine butterfly. And you can use your block for a pillow if you like. Not really a soft pillow, but as a neck support. Again, this is a little bit higher than what I would typically use, but I do feel like I want a little bit of support under my neck today. So with supine butterfly, I'm going to bring the soles of my feet together and I'm going to let my knees fall out to the side. And if you feel like you want some support here, which Again, I've been preaching to use. I'll pretend I still have something under my head. You can wedge something underneath so that you have, and you would do that on both sides so that you feel more supported and able to relax. I am able to relax without those there, so I'm going to keep this under my head and just allow that nice stretch and release into the inner thighs. So we're not doing any pelvic floor activation. There'll be some pelvic floor observation here where when you're in these positions, you can feel the expansion that's happening ideally on the in breath. And then rather than us activating the pelvic floor on the exhale, all we're doing is feeling that expansion subside as we exhale. So it's very passive. We're not trying to work per se, we're trying to release and let go. I know you can't hear this, but having a purring cat close by can be quite calming as well. At the end of this breath, we're now going to move into happy baby. So I'm going to get one foot up at a time and I'm going to reach through and you can grab onto the outside edge. You could grab onto your toes. You could hook your fingers. If you didn't have socks on, you could hook your fingers around your big toe, whatever feels good for you. We're going to do one leg at a time and then we're going to go into both. So with the leg you've got, you're just kind of uh, pulling almost that foot down towards you. In the opposite leg, you could leave how we just had it in butterfly. You could extend it further away. You could have it bent wherever feels good for you. I feel like I have more kind of balance almost when I have it open a little bit here. And you can play around with moving the foot, getting some length into the hamstring as well. So all this tension. I got a lot of tension in my hamstrings. Nice calm breathing. 
If you don't have a purring cat, you may enjoy the silence or you may want to put on your own calming music. There's a few yoga playlists on Spotify that I quite like. So I'm bringing that leg back in towards the center and I'm going to put it back down. I'm going to do the other leg now. So same thing, reaching through, grabbing the outside edge of the foot or the toes, whatever serves you. And now lift that foot up and try to bring that foot, almost lowering the knee down and towards the ground. play around with some hamstring awareness. I really got to work on my hamstrings. No judgment though, no shame. It is what it is. We all hold tension. And as long as you're taking steps each day to try to Make yourself just a little bit better. Try to grow a little bit every day in whatever way that means to you. And now in preparation for both, we're going to first start out with our feet a little bit lower. So I'm going to bring that other foot up to meet. So it's kind of like a supine butterfly, but we have our, our feet off the ground and just hanging on to the outside edges of the feet here. You can do a little bit more sort of rocking, rolling, just doing, doing whatever feels intuitive. Just exploring some different ways to move in these positions and maybe find a spot of tension like I just did and hang out there for a second. And we're preparing for full happy baby where we've got our both our knees up. So now I'm going to lift one leg, lift the other leg. And sinking, pulling those knees down. And if you can, think about almost lengthening the tailbone. So we're trying to get the tailbone on the mat. If it's way up here, that's okay. You want to try to work towards getting that tailbone down on the mat. Exploring a little bit of movement here again, or you can stay still. Benefits to both. Now with all that talk of hamstrings, we're going to do a little hamstring lengthening now. So you're going to want your strap or your scarf or whatever it is that you have. You're going to wrap the scarf or whatever around the bottom of your feet. And I want you to then take the non-stretching leg all the way down. So you're sliding it down and you want to put the back of that hamstring, the back of that leg on the ground. And you want to check in and make sure we have that neutral pelvis position again. So we've just kind of been in a tucked position with our tail or pubic joint higher. So I want to bring my pubic joint down, which if you can see, as I do that, I'm not doing anything in my leg. I'm not stretching it, but as I move my pelvis, it's my, my leg is moving without me actually moving it. So it goes to show you that a lot of times we might think we have flexibility, but we're actually just moving the pelvis. 
So get back into neutral and we want to hold that neutral pelvis position, then strength, uh, straighten that leg, flex those toes. So bring the toes sort of towards your face. And then use the strap now to bring that leg up as high as you can without tipping. So we want to keep that neutral pelvis position and bring that leg as high as we can without tipping and without, you can also see when I tip that the back of my straight lengthened leg on the ground also comes off the floor. So I want to keep the back of that leg on the ground. For those that are feeling like they can't do, if you have, if you have a, a big booty, it might be a little bit harder, but also if you're tensing in your glutes, like I just did, then that's going to pop your leg up off as well. So let go of tension in and around your glutes. See if that helps. Well, you're in a pose too, so I just sort of did a subtle shift and drew my leg closer into the center line, recognizing that this actually is a little bit easier than it is here. So we, our body likes to find the easiest way. So just check in for subtle shifts that our body might have found that made something feel a little bit easier and see if you can find that spot that maybe we've been neglecting or ignoring or not even aware of that might actually build a little bit more benefit. Okay, I'm gonna slowly bend that knee and I'm gonna switch over to the other side. So lengthening this the leg I just stretched, lengthening that away, getting the back of the leg on the ground, neutral pelvis, straighten that stretching leg. and slowly draw it up as high as you can without tipping. And then find that subtle shift where you might find a little bit more need for release. <laughs> you probably feel it on the back of your calf here as well, especially if you let, so if you're pushing into the band, you won't feel as much in the calf, but if you let the band pull your toes towards your shin, you'll also feel it in the back of the calf as well as in the back of the hamstring. So the whole length of the back of our leg. And we are done. So slowly releasing that leg back down. And we have just enjoyed a lovely release stretch session that helped let go of tension in and around the pelvis that could be interfering with some of the very important jobs that the pelvic floor has. So it's not always about Kegels or activation. We have to make sure we balance that out with some relaxation as well. We'll see you next time.